Our annual summer barbecue bash was in full swing, boasting a lively crowd of over 50 hungry guests. Amidst the laughter and joy, activities abounded, from swimming in lawn games to dancing and mingling by the makeshift bar. The rhythmic hum of the margarita blender underscored the bustling atmosphere as the bartender raced to keep up with the demand for icy beverages. Children splashed gleefully in the pool, joined by our two young teens, while older adolescents lounged nearby, exchanging playful glances. Observing the scene, it seemed the wives, perhaps secretly, anticipated the lively energy their husbands would bring to bed after admiring the youthful guests all afternoon. After years of marriage, priorities shifted and desires evolved. Regardless of physique, spouses sought excitement and fulfillment, acknowledging the limitations of routine. Though unspoken agreements prevailed, not all adhered to the look but don't touch policy, revealing underlying tensions and desires. How did I uncover my wife's betrayal? It began weeks ago, a nagging feeling that something was amiss in our marriage. Small details raised suspicion, yet after 17 years together, intuition spoke louder than doubts. Then came the defining moment, arriving home unexpectedly one afternoon to find them entangled on our bed, a scene straight from a poorly scripted film. It was then that the truth hit me like a freight train, Audrey was cheating. Acknowledging these minor clues feels humiliating, exposing my obliviousness. Yet, amidst the humiliation, there's a glimmer of awareness. Despite my initial blindness, I now recognize the significance of those subtle hints, should I ever dare to remarry. Among these clues was Audrey's sudden kindness in recent months, a departure from our customary bickering. Our marriage, once marked by playful banter, had devolved into a cycle of criticism. Whether it was the perpetually raised toilet seat or tireless reminders during mundane chores, our exchanges were rife with petty grievances. I felt compelled to highlight the fact that the dishes she claimed to have washed still bore traces of stubborn food residue, even if it meant waking her up. These minor interactions, typical of middle-aged married life, were gestures of affection. However, a few months back, a sudden change occurred. Gone were the criticisms, replaced by unwavering support. Initially, I credited myself for this transformation, believing I had miraculously improved as a husband. Looking back, it was peculiar. When I gently brought up another overlooked dirty dish, she apologized sincerely before returning to her slumber. The real red flag should have been her encouragement for me to spend more time away from home, golfing on weekends, and socializing with colleagues on weeknights. What kind of wife does that? Subsequently, Audrey's newfound enthusiasm for intimacy was startling. She initiated sex frequently, even exploring new activities like anal play, which had been met with a chilling response years prior. Now, she embraced it eagerly, and I, blinded by excitement, failed to question the sudden change. Her vocalization during sex also underwent a dramatic shift. Previously reserved, now she screamed explicit phrases, praising my prowess in bed. It was a stark departure from her usual demeanor. Even amidst intimate moments, her mind wandered to mundane concerns like lunch preferences, a reminder of the reality of long-term relationships. During one particularly passionate encounter in the missionary position, I preferred to hold her legs in a wide V-shape, aiming for a certain aesthetic akin to a male porn star. However, amidst the fervor, her remark about her pale legs broke the intensity, highlighting her concern over trivial matters. Returning to the pivotal moment of discovery, I reacted with a mixture of shock and disbelief. Far from collapsing in tears, I confronted the situation with a reasonable yet incredulous question. However, my response seemed to only embolden Audrey, leaving me to question its effectiveness. In hindsight, a more dramatic reaction, such as screaming threats or displaying physical aggression, might have felt more fitting. Instead, the nonchalant demeanor only added to the surreal nature of the situation. Audrey's dismissive tone and casual dressing downplayed the gravity of the betrayal, leaving me to grapple with the aftermath alone. As Audrey attempted to placate me with patronizing reassurances, I couldn't help but notice the subtle display of evidence, pinkish-red bite marks adorning her skin. Whether intentional or oblivious, it served as a haunting reminder of her infidelity, overshadowing her hollow attempts at consolation. Audrey's calm and methodical demeanor was unsettling as she stripped the sheets from our once-shared bed, treating the act as routine amidst my stunned silence. Following her lead, I found myself trailing behind like a bewildered puppy. 
She proceeded to outline the practicalities of our situation, emphasizing the potential fallout of divorce, especially for me. Despite her composed tone, the implications were clear. Discretion would be in my best interest. As she efficiently loaded the bedding into the washer, Audrey's actions seemed almost detached, devoid of emotion. Her brisk gestures and matter-of-fact statements belied the gravity of the situation. With a gentle pat on my shoulder, she departed, leaving me in a daze. For what felt like an eternity, I stood motionless, grappling with the reality of my shattered marriage. In the grip of shock, I fell into a pattern of robotic routine, mechanically navigating through each day. Despite fleeting fantasies of revenge and escape, I found myself immobilized by indecision. While I entertained elaborate schemes to gather evidence or disappear to a distant paradise, in reality, I did nothing substantial. I resolved to maintain normalcy, albeit with a silent vow to abstain from intimacy with my unfaithful spouse, a promise that crumbled after only a few nights. Thus, life carried on with a facade of normalcy, each day blending into the next as I navigated the wreckage of my shattered marriage. Now, here's where things get really bizarre. Despite the traumatic events of that afternoon, my wife never mentioned a word about her liaison with Jake again. It was as though the entire ordeal had been a figment of my imagination. Our intimate life surged from three or four times a week to five or six, becoming more adventurous and passionate. Audrey's culinary skills soared, her demeanor more deferential than ever, morphing into what could only be described as a step-forward wife. I had little doubt she was still seeing Big Jake, as she had unabashedly referred to him during their tryst. Yet, there was no evidence, no hint of her extramarital escapades. I found myself growing accustomed to her double life, perhaps exactly as she had intended. Meanwhile, my own existence had never been smoother. I had almost successfully buried thoughts of her infidelity, content to ignore reality until the kids came of age. But then, she shattered my fragile illusion by inviting her lover to our annual barbecue, my barbecue. Which brings us to today. I couldn't fathom how Audrey had the audacity to extend an invitation to her lover, his wife, and their children to our cherished event. But now, I had a plan, a plan that took both time and money to orchestrate, but one I was fully prepared to execute. As the appointed day arrived, tension hung heavy in the air. Audrey's nerves were palpable, her gaze darting to and fro, undoubtedly suspicious of my intentions. Meanwhile, her lover, predictably tardy, finally arrived, his smug smirk preceding him. Before I could utter a word, the children dashed past us, eager to join ours in the pool. Pleasantries exchanged, the air thick with tension, I made a calculated move. Handing a thumb drive to Addie, I discreetly concealed a roll of quarters, ready to unveil my carefully crafted plan. Thank you, Andrew, but what is this? Addie's curiosity was evident as she examined the object in her hand. It's the explanation for why I'm going to do this. With a clenched jaw and determination coursing through me, I prepared for what was about to unfold. Despite the inevitable pain, I knew it had to be done. With a swift and forceful motion, I delivered a powerful blow to Jake's condescending nose, using every ounce of strength I could muster. The impact was brutal, sending blood, snot, and cartilage flying, along with the quarters concealed in my hand. Though my hand didn't literally explode, the searing pain shot through me, yet it was overshadowed by a surge of adrenaline. It was a cathartic release, washing away the debasement of the past weeks. In that moment, I felt alive, empowered by the act of defiance against the betrayal I had endured. In a fair fight, Jake would have likely overpowered me, but he didn't deserve such civility. He got what he deserved, and perhaps more, hopefully in the form of his wife leaving him for his deceitful actions. As Addie screamed in disbelief and Audrey rushed to Jake's aid, the room filled with onlookers, drawn by the commotion. Amidst the chaos, Addie's plea for understanding echoed in my ears. Andrew, have you lost your mind? Her shock was palpable, but she didn't question the validity of my accusation against her husband. It's all on the thumb drive. There's photos, video, and audio, I explained, gesturing towards the evidence she held. As the drama unfolded, the crowd gathered, save for the oblivious children who continued their playful antics in the pool, unaware of the turmoil unfolding around them. Both Jake and Audrey began to regain consciousness, but I couldn't help but worry as the blood from Jake's nose showed no signs of abating. 
Despite the possibility of the blood spreading thinly on the hard floor, it still seemed like an alarming amount to me. Audrey's tears flowed freely as she confronted me, pleading for understanding. How could you do this to me? I told you it was nothing, that it would end soon, and no one even knew about it. I couldn't contain my bitterness. Because, dear wife, I wanted you to experience even a fraction of the humiliation I've endured. And as for no one knowing? Turning to address the stunned onlookers, I motioned for silence. I apologize for the disturbance, everyone. There's no need for alarm. Gesturing to the blood-soaked floor where Jake and Audrey lay, I continued, before we resume the festivities, I have a question for you all. As hands tentatively rose amidst murmurs and glances exchanged, I sighed. It appears over half of you were aware, to some extent, of my wife's affair with Big Jake here. Thank you for your honesty. Now, let's enjoy the remainder of the party. This will be our last one, so let's make it memorable. Suddenly, Addie delivered a swift blow to Audrey's nose, mirroring my earlier action against Jake. The collective gasp from the crowd was palpable as Audrey crumpled once more, this time in a seated position. Addie's controlled fury was palpable as she addressed Jake. Get yourself to the emergency room, then get out. The kids and I are staying. Audrey and I have some things to discuss. Dragging Audrey away, Addie's strength and determination were evident, despite the slick floor making the task challenging. As they disappeared from view, I couldn't help but smirk at the absurdity of the situation, even noticing a couple of quarters stuck to Audrey's face as she was pulled away. Okay, maybe Addie's jab about Audrey's nose was a bit harsh. While Audrey's nose had a distinctive shape, her face wasn't fat. Personally, I found her nose charming, reminiscent of Jennifer Grey's in Dirty Dancing. Still, after taking that punch, I figured Audrey Schnauz might have a new look. But that was her issue to deal with, especially considering the steely determination in Addie's eyes. It seemed Audrey might face more than just a bruised ego before the night was over. My respect for Addie soared after witnessing her swift action. Unlike me, who was torn between concern for Audrey's safety and manning the grill, Addie handled the situation like a pro. As the crowd dispersed to the backyard for food and drinks, I realized my duty was at the grill. Known for my legendary burgers, I focused on my craft, using real wood chunks for that authentic flavor. And no gas grills for me, that's the domain of D-I-N-K-S, dual income, no kids. As I tended to the grill, I noticed something odd, none of the guys approached me, not even for casual conversation. It struck me as peculiar, but I brushed it off. Instead, it was the wives who offered sympathy and support. They checked in on me, offering help in whatever way they could. It seemed like a maternal instinct kicking in. A couple even made sure I had their numbers, just in case. It was a gesture that warmed my heart amid the chaos of the day. Addie approached me with Jess and Jessica in tow, and I'll admit, I felt a pang of apprehension. After the altercation and the chaos I'd inadvertently brought into Addie's life, I took a step back, just in case. But my worry was unfounded. She enveloped me in a hug so tight I could feel her heartbeat, and if I weren't a man, I might have found it a tad inappropriate for a barbecue. She released me, shaking her head in disdain as she mentioned her husband's incompetence. As Addie spoke, Audrey crossed my mind. I glanced back at the house, wondering what Addie had done. Thankfully, she assured me Audrey was unharmed, just given a stern talking to. With a snicker from her kids, Addie bid farewell, leaving me to wonder about her conversation with my ex-wife. Later, as I finished cleaning the grill, Audrey timidly approached, her face already showing signs of bruising. Her swollen nose and makeshift tissue plugs didn't help her appearance. She apologized, claiming she hadn't realized the affair would upset me so much. But before I could respond, a young woman approached, handing Audrey legal papers. Audrey collapsed to the grass, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of poetic justice. As the process server left, I stood there, feeling a surge of pride despite the chaos. Holding my spatula like a scepter, wearing my grease-stained apron, I surveyed the scene. In that moment, I felt like the king of my domain, a true man's man. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Write your opinion in the comments.